At the beginning of the previous two springs, I convinced myself that I needed to build a new workbench. The first year was a four foot by eight foot Goliath. It became unwieldy and took up too much space. The second year, I scaled back to a 40 inch by 80 inch work surface and the size worked really well for me. But because it was made out of wood and the garage floor slopes and dips and dives in every direction, I never truly had a level surface to work on. So this year, I thought I'd battle the beast one more time and try fixing all the issues I've come across over the last two years. This year, the big difference is steel. No more flimsy MDF, no more floppy plywood legs, only solid structural steel. And today I'm going to show you how I built it. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where you can get plans to make your own if you're interested. The first thing to do is to place the top on a flat surface and clean all the edges with a grinder. The table will be built upside down. So if you have a preference of which side is the top, place that side down. If you're working on the floor, place some two by fours under the plate so you have some room for clamps. After the plate edges are cleaned, the edge tubes can be placed on the plate and fitted to each other. When designing the table, I wanted it to be something that could be made with as few tools as possible. The only technical cuts are the eight miter cuts needed on the table edges. There are four table edge pieces, two cross support pieces, and nine leg and shelf pieces. If you talk to your local metal supplier, there is a chance they can cut everything to length and you'll just need a grinder with a cutoff wheel to miter the edges. With the edge tubes fitted together and clamped down, you can now start tacking everything together. You should start with tacking the mitered seams together and then tack each corner to the plate and then tack the middle of each tube on both sides to the plate. After everything is tacked in place, you can weld all the pieces together. All the tube seams get fully welded and all the corners and middle along the plate get one inch welds on the inside and outside of each tube. Now that the top and the edges are welded together, the cross supports can be tacked in and welded. Depending on the tolerances of the top and the accuracy of the tube length, you will most likely need to grind the tubes down a bit to get them to fit. This would also be a good time to make sure all nine leg lengths are within a sixteenth of an inch to each other. Use three legs as spacers, but only weld in the middle one. Measure the outside of the support tube to the edge of the table and make sure the measurements are within a sixteenth of an inch. Once the cross supports are fitted and tacked in, you can fully weld the tubes in. Do full welds where the tubes meet and one inch welds between the tubes and the top plate. The top of the table is now complete, so we can move on to attaching the legs. At this point, all the remaining tubes are the same length, so grab three and arrange them in an H pattern. 
I'm using some squares I made for other projects. They are simple enough to make if you have a table saw or miter saw, or you can buy some heavy duty metal ones online. When setting up the H, make sure the legs are equal on both sides. Once clamped together, sand the leg up and measure the inset on both sides. Once they are within a sixteenth of an inch, tack only the legs to the top. Do not tack the cross brace to the legs. After the legs are tacked on, move to the other side and tack the other two legs to the table. With the legs tacked on, we can now locate the cross braces and tack them to the legs. I recommend locating the top of the tube 6 inches from the bottom of the leg. I will be designing a set of drop down casters in the future so the table will be easier to move. And my design will be based off of the 6 inch bottom shelf. Tack the two that are parallel to the table supports, then clamp a flat piece of tube or wood to the cross braces to locate the two perpendicular tubes. At this point, all the tubes should be tacked together, and now all the seams can be fully welded. It is advised to move around the table when welding everything together. Welding in opposite and catty corner joints will minimize distortion. <laughs> Now that the tubes are welded, the last thing to weld together are the feet assemblies. Again, these parts can be pre-cut from your metal supplier, or you can cut them yourself with a cutoff wheel, though this will take some patience. I've already pre-drilled all four pieces with an eighth inch drill bit, and then with a quarter inch drill bit. Now I'm opening them up to three quarters of an inch with a step drill bit. I'm using a hand drill to show you you don't need a big drill press to get this done. A simple vise and some patience will work great, and leave you with a nice chamfered hole. With all the holes drilled out, we need to locate the nuts that the feet will screw into. For this, we will use a little trick where we wrap the foot with some cardboard strip until it's about three quarters of an inch in diameter. Slide the foot and the cardboard into the hole and then tighten down the nut. Since the cardboard strip is wrapped continuously around the foot, 
it will be positioned in the center of the hole. Even if the weld pulls to one side or the other, the cardboard won't compress enough to allow the threads to hit the plate. Once everything is bolted together, tack the nuts in place with three tacks, pull the foot out along with the cardboard and finish welding the nuts to the plate. The last step is to attach the feet to the table. Just like before, place the plate on the leg, tack it in a few places to make sure it is located correctly, and then follow up with full welds. After everything is completely cooled, thread in the feet, and your new fabrication table is complete. Now that the table is done, it can be flipped over, leveled, and is ready for some work. If you're interested in the plans for this table, you can visit my new website at nabilimam.com. There you can buy plans for some of my builds. This will be the first. The plans will come with detailed views of how the table is assembled, a material cut list, and off-the-shelf items you'll have to buy, guides on where to weld the parts together, and a list of tools you'll need to successfully build this table. I hope you enjoyed coming along with this build and found it helpful and informative. Thanks for watching. Bye.